Hey, buttheads, Future Boy here. It is November 12th, and I just received a package at the door. That was the date of the famous Hill Valley lightning storm. Coincidence? I think not. I ordered these so long ago I had no idea what would be in this huge box, but lo and behold, it is Biff Tannen's cane from Back to the Future Part 2. These are prop replicas that I bought from the UK site Zavi and were created by the collectible company Dust. I am excited to see how these turned out, so let's crack them open. Let's start with the full-size version. This collectible box features a logo for Biff Tannen's Pleasure Paradise seen in the alternate 1985. I have to say I find it a bit odd that this cane that was used in the normal timeline would be packaged in a box from the alternate timeline, but I guess I'll give them a pass because they did a really nice job with this packaging. It's even decorated to match Biff's hotel office. I mean, check out this great attention to detail. This is not a cheap replica. The cane itself is lightweight, but still feels sturdy like most canes you'd get from a regular drugstore, though it does warn us not to use it as an actual walking aid, so go figure. But the topper is solid and heavy. I'm not sure what it is molded from underneath, probably resin, but the outside is gold-plated versus the original prop, which was brass. According to their website, this replica is screen matched as closely as possible to the original filming prop, even down to the engraved Biff H. Tannen detail on the back of the fist. And this took me by surprise because as many times as I have watched this movie, I have never seen this engraving on top of the cane. I actually went back frame by frame and I still could not see a clear shot featuring it. The only reason I know this is an accurate edition is that I found an old catalog for the 2013 Profiles in History prop auction. Inside, they were selling the original screen used cane prop, and sure enough, they mentioned the engraving in the listing. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of these movies, and I'm constantly paying attention to details like this. If anybody out there noticed this detail while watching the movie, maybe on the 4K disc edition, let me know in the comments, and I will be very impressed. Let's move on now to the broken version. This prop is housed in an entirely different box showcasing the DMC DeLorean Motor Company logo, making it seem like the cane was thrown in a discarded DeLorean parts box, which makes sense since this broken cane was found in the DeLorean. Maybe Doc had some spare parts lying around his lab. He thought it would be a good place to store this future evidence. Or, on the other hand, it could just be an amazing coincidence. These are both one-to-one -one scale replicas, both limited edition. This one features all the same weight and detail as the full-size version, except of course it is broken partway down. The wood from the brake is jagged, another nice attention to detail, though the extra coloration looks darker than what Zavi had originally shown on their website, and it does seem a little bit darker than what we can see in the film even. But I think they still did a great job overall with this piece. Whatever the discoloration at the break, this will still be an undeniably recognizable piece in anyone's collection. I must admit, I was a bit taken aback when I first saw the size of the fist. It seemed a bit bigger than what was seen on camera, but when comparing the piece in my hand to what it looked like in Marty's hand in the film, it looks to be pretty close in ratio. The gold plating is a bit shinier than how it appears on camera, and even compared to the preview of the item on the seller's website, a bit of dulling spray could make it closer to the original, but I probably won't risk damaging these collectible pieces. In regards to the overall piece, according to Profiles in History, the original prop measures 36.5 inches, while this replica is short by about a half an inch, but who's counting? All in all, I think the people at Zavi did a great job on these pieces. These are both limited to only 500 per unit, so I'm really curious to see how many of you future fans got your hands on one or both of these. And what do you think of the final product? Are you impressed by the weight and quality? Do you feel like the ratio is off or is it just right? Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you in the future. Buttheads.